See, it's a full ass screen. I hate the music. There's no way that I know to turn this off right now. Feels like I'm, I'm like Best Buy right now. This is called the DS Pixel. It's on Kickstarter. There was also gonna be some local vendors, uh, Dane Keebs being one of them, I think in the future. But right now it's just, it's just Kickstarter. I've been talking to them for a while. Also with all these Kickstarter projects, any group buy in general, buy at your own risk type deal. This is a very interesting board for a lot of different reasons. This is crooked, yeah, it's part of my notes, trust me. This is basically, you guys know what the, the Final Melson Flux keyboards with the screens behind them? This is basically that, except they got to market first, it seems. Like this is the only company that's reached out that actually has like a working prototype of this. It is battery operated as well. Tons of tons of like mini features and things you can read. The overall look of the keyboard, I'll kind of show you guys first before we turn it on. It has a giant screen, which we'll turn on afterwards. It has a pen rail, which this is all new from this revision, by the way. I like the pen rail, it's cool. I like the overall design. I don't love how chunky this thing is personally, but I, it's a trade off you have to make for what we're getting here. The badge, I don't love. I really think this badge is tacky. It also is crooked which I'm hoping they fix. It also, to me, has some tacky RGB. I don't mind this side strip of RGB over here. I don't mind this. I don't love this. This is, I think, also doubling up for some cooling as well, but it's some RGB as, as well. You guys will see, not my favorite thing in the world. I think it's tacky. The back has USB-C ports. Both you can use to charge and use the keyboard. One you can use to charge other devices. And then it has some covers. One has an HDMI because really cool thing about this, which again, there's a lot of cool tech in this. Does it work together? We'll find out. You can actually use this as a second display, which is interesting. And I, I think it's a, it's a cool aspect of the board. I'll touch more about that here while I go over some of my notes. Uh, I appreciate that as well. Kind of gives you double function for something. Uh, this one here didn't have anything underneath it. I think this is just the other part of the badge and they're all magnetic and you can change them. These badges are quite tacky in my opinion. I think they're upside down, but they're quite tacky. Not really something I'd probably put on the board personally. They are quite loose as well. I think they need to be fitted better. Then we have the bottom of the board. This is where the board I think is, is kind of neat, but also makes no sense to me. Sorry about language. It has four feet, which I'm assuming these feet are probably not gonna make it to the final round of this board. But it has this giant feet uh, foot over here, which is, I guess, stainless steel. It gives a lot of weight to this board. It is what it is. It elevates the board. You don't really need it for sound in this case. I think normally that would be a point of criticism for me, but I also think that these feet over here make absolutely no sense. You cannot remove this either. That's kind of my thought process there. And then it also has a wireless mode as you guys saw by the toggle on the back over here. The cool thing about this though, is this again, is kind of multifunctional and I like the tech behind this. Now, is this comfortable to type on? We'll see, but I'll show you. Let me boot it up and show you guys and then we'll go over the things I have. This is not really a build for this, by the way. That's why it's a double stream today. This is more of just like a, here's my thoughts and criticism on this. As someone who builds a lot of custom keyboards, I don't really need to plug it in, I guess. It does work. I did make sure of all that. So let's turn it on. Here's one point of criticism. You have to boot up the keyboard because this is essentially a little computer. So this isn't like a plug and play device in which you can like quickly turn it on. Gives you this lovely boot up sound because there's speakers in here. Here's the board itself. So very, very interesting. So I guess I want to go over some, some notes about this is they're calling this electro ca ca uh, capacitive keys, keycaps. I feel like it, it, yes, it makes sense, but also it's a bit disingenuous. Essentially what these are doing is just like a touch screen because you can use your fingers. It's a touch screen. I get the premise of it. It makes sense. However, it definitely feels like you're just using a touch screen. It doesn't ha have that same sort of like key feel as like a Topper key keyboard. A little bit. I see where they started to simulate that in this because they started to do, they have these like little keys that press down and they're kind of using these, these like little rubber dome things, which is close. So the typing experience is interesting. It's definitely a little bit odd, right? So even from the side over here, it has good visibility. It's an IPS display, so you can see things. Now my camera is not going to pick it up well on the side because I have one of those, uh, it's going into like a sleep mode. I have one of those filters on the camera. You can actually see the RGB on the side. It's looking to pair to something right now. It's sort of like a weird mix of, it feels like a membrane, but it also sort of feels like Topper. It is technically electro, like electro capacitive. I get that because it's a touchscreen. Anyone who reads that having used a Topper keyboard might feel like 
this feels a lot different because this doesn't have a switch. So it's technically correct. However, I just think it's a little bit disingenuous to call it this. I would just call it a touchscreen. I feel like because they're also sending this to a lot of people in the hobby, you kind of get this um, this idea that it's like a, a Toper feeling keyboard, but it's not. I, I, I typed on Toper and I typed on this. It sort of gets there, but yeah, it, it doesn't really get there. I wanna go over some of my notes and you can also customize all the individual, the GIFs as well here, which I thought was really cool. So as you type, you can do whatever you want. You, can, you don't even have to use this. You can just literally type with your fingers. So I did try typing on this for about two days and I have some, some thoughts and some feelings. First of all, the price point on this, now this is depending on what backer level you go to, it's 350, I believe it's USD. I'm pretty positive this is all defaulted to USD. It's about 350 bucks, which honestly isn't that bad for the early backing. It's really not that terrible. It's not that crazy considering you're getting like a 4K display and stuff and you can double this up as a secondary monitor. To go over some of my notes, I have this into three sections. First of all, this is a sample keycap set I've been told. I was gonna rip this to shreds because I don't know if you guys can tell, this looks really bad, like terrible quality. Last minute I got told that this is being, like this is just for showcasing right now, like they have better versions. Like look at this. And I thought each one of these needed to have a film you need to pull off and I was sitting there, I'm like, do I need to pull off a film? but apparently this is already being worked on. So that's just part of my note. The other part is I just wanted to re-clarify. This is something that obviously can be customized in a lot of ways, but you cannot build this. There's nothing really to build. This is gonna ship like this and you're gonna put this on and you can drag and drop some, some GIFs into the, the keyboard's on internal memory, which is about 12 gigabytes. And that's about it. There's no real software for this. It works with VIA. Uh, I wish there was an easier to use piece of software or some sort of web-based software to kind of help you switch keys around a little easier, but it doesn't. Like in terms of the GIFs and all the customi customizability there. And they're clearly going for the same concept as things like the Flux keyboard and stuff. So uh, interesting that they got the market first, you know what I mean? So again, to go over some of the cool stuff and then I'm gonna go over some of my more finite details that I really need to drive home with this. You guys are wondering, how does this feel to type on? It feels okay. I was typing fine. However, because this is also a prototype set over here, they told me that there's, for my version that they sent me, which I, I hate when people do this, by the way. This is like a big pet peeve for someone who looks at and reviews products. They told me that each key, like you're gonna notice different weights to each key. And they said that's on purpose because they're trying to figure out which ones they like better. And that just happens to be the sample I got. The problem is, is I don't know now what the end product is gonna be like for people who are interested in this board. So how can I properly take a look at this and be like, yeah, this feels good. Right now, from what it feels, there's definitely some keys, like these ones over here, and then like there's like some over here. These feel really good. In fact, if the whole board was like these, a lot more firmer and a lot more like tactile is a good word to use, I would say, yeah, this is a great typing experience. But then I got some like this, which are, you can't even see, but they're incredibly sensitive. So yes, it is good to type on, but the few keys that were, you know, incredibly sensitive that they're saying have different resistances or whatever, those were not fun to type on. In fact, I would trip those keys sometimes by even just brushing my hand lightly across the keys. And it became frustrating for those particular keys. But other than that, it was pretty, interesting to type on, like it didn't feel bad. It actually felt pretty good. It's also really quiet. Doesn't sound bad at all, because there's no sound. I like the fact you can customize each key effect. That's cool. There's probably a lot of stuff you can end up doing with this. I think there's a lot of cool features about the display. You can use it for a whole bunch of different things. However, if you, you can tell someone there's a selling point of this being an additional display, right? But then you still need to give them a keyboard to use. Yes, this doubles as a display, and I guess for those fortunate enough to have a few different keyboards in their arsenal, you could just turn this around, use this as a display, because it stands upright pretty decently. At least it did on my other desk over here. Stands upright pretty decently. Actually, no, it's not staying well on this particular desk. Uh, but, you know, like, it, it is what it is. Like, I think the whole idea of you needing a second keyboard now to use this as a display. Now comes the, the nitty-gritty part. First of all, I think the design could be better. 
it could be a lot better. They could have, you know, they could have made this a lot more timeless. Instead, I'm gonna be honest, this whole design of this board, it differed so much from the round that I got the first original prototype that I kind of feel like this is a whole different board at this point. In fact, they called it something different. It's the same concept, same internals. I just think this is really, really, really chunky. Um, it also looks at a little bit dated in terms of styling. It is what it is. I would have loved to see this done in a more timeless manner without all the RGB. Completely unnecessary all the RGB. Uh, I feel like you want the screen to be your main focus. That's about it. The other limitation of this is I can only look at what I have here. And in its current state, like if nothing changes, I cannot recommend this board because of this, this typing screen over here. It's just, you can't long-term type on this. There's too many sensitive keys. Obviously they say they're gonna make changes, but what I've learned to kind of navigate now is it's nice to promise changes. And yeah, we all do that. Like we, we, we sometimes we buy on a promise, especially for keyboards, but just, I would keep that in mind if this does interest you for anyone ever watching this. The other thing is you cannot adjust actuation force or travel distance, which means you're gonna be stuck with whatever they end up liking the best for the keyboard. And which means you may not even like this. And if I didn't like typing on the screen itself, I thought it was awful. And it also sits really high as well. So it makes it a little uncomfortable. But yeah, you can't change things. And I think while this whole craze, because I know there's a bunch of brands trying to get these products out, you know, with the whole screens behind everything. I just, I don't think in the long term, they're going to be super, super great products um, for people who really care about their keyboard. I think this is a novel idea, very much so. It's a very novel idea and I can appreciate that. But I, I can already think of personally a bunch of cool different ways that they could have implemented a screen while still using a better, more mechanical switch. Because Flux apparently is the same thing. Flux has this like cover you put on top. I, I feel like this might be like the, the simple way, but I don't think it's the most effective way. But that's, that's the biggest thing for me is you're gonna be lacking a lot of customization for how your keyboard feels. At $350, is this a, a good deal? I mean, for the tech you get inside, maybe? But like, I can't adjust that, for example. I can't adjust the sleep. I can't adjust a lot of things right now. You kind of just have to deal with it. At least I don't know how to adjust it. Overall though, if you wanted to back the project, you can, right? But I don't know how good this is gonna be in the long run. I hope it turns out good because there has been a lot of active revisions. How long does the battery last? Um, so I've been using it since yesterday uh, and it was at 100%. I've maybe used it two hours and it's down to 71%. They're saying it has about 12 hours of battery life. Based off of me killing about 20% in two hours, I don't know. I don't know how true that is. I guess we'll see. Yeah, you can also just plug it in. But yeah, like I don't know where this keyboard sits. I think this is gonna be for someone who just wants techie stuff at their desk. Also, this badge needs to be adjusted. That's kind of where I'm at with this, is I just don't know what the target audience is other than someone who wants techy stuff at their desk. Like the usability aspect of this is okay at best. Like I still don't love this typing experience and perhaps I don't love it because they didn't send me a finalized key set that actually feels the same across the board. This is too hard to use. Uh, you know how many TikToks and videos I've seen of pe people not even reviewing the product, just typing on this and not my cup of tea feels gimmicky. I really wish they'd put some more R&D into their keycap set here. Really, really wish, because I think, I think the product could be really cool. It's just not there yet. Uh, might be a showcase then. The space bar is driving me nuts. Oh, they have a split space bar for no reason at all on this keycap set. But I'm assuming you can go into Via and change things. I was doing some comparisons to like the Flux keyboard. The Flux seems to have like a better sense of what they want to deliver keycap set wise. This seems to have a more realistic, like, hey, this is an actual product because the I don't think there's been a single demo of the Flux yet. The keycap set and also the layout should be small enough to not be cut off by the frames of the caps. It's cool. I can, I can, de I can definitely see this being like a centerpiece on someone's desk. And see, it's a full ass screen. 
I hate the music. There's no way that I know to turn this off right now. But they got some like demo stuff on the background that I'm sure you can change as well. I just didn't bother changing it all. I agree, this is a weird demo. <laughs> Feels like I'm, I'm like Best Buy right now. Like, listen, I, I want to keep it off, uh, like, obviously a buck with you. I don't know who this is for. And like I said, I can only imagine this is for someone who wants something extremely techy on their desk. I want to say this though. I really appreciate how much effort it seems like the, the runners of this project have put into this. I still have the original prototype they sent me, which is completely unusable, by the way. It is so much different. And the original one was so bad in comparison to this one. I think if they really polish this keycap set, I think if they work on getting some of the aesthetics to be a little bit more non in your face, and also like this doesn't really lock in very nicely either. Like you kind of have to fiddle with it. There's just a lot of stuff that doesn't feel premium about this, even though it should feel like a premium product at that particular price point with clear switches and keycaps. That's what I was thinking too. Like why not just recess the screen down, put all the techy stuff on like a big bar at the top, and then just use clear keycaps and clear switches. It doesn't necessarily need to have the letters popping through. You can just have colors underneath, which could be really cool. I don't know. I, it, it feels like a weird mixed market. And uh, if I'm being honest, I think where the, the marketing is really targeting is people who want cutesy stuff or cool things as they type. As a long-term product, I don't know, man. It's tough. Just a flex to have. Yeah, it would be a flex to have, I guess. Interesting concept, very interesting concept. I would even say halfway decently execute it compared to other interesting concepts. Like I'm not gonna knock it, it, it's, it works, it's a working product. Do I personally know the major use case at the end of the day? Not really. There's a lot of stuff they put on their marketing, like a ton of stuff that you know makes it seem like you can do everything. You, you kind of have to realistically sit here and be like, can it? So I, I don't know. Uh, and at the end of the day too, like I don't want you guys to spend all your money on something and be like, this is fun for five minutes and then not fun past that. Better keyboard at cheaper price is doing both but worse. At least the price isn't exorbitant. I agree. It's not a terrible price point at its early bird pricing. Interesting product. And again, I want to give kudos to them. It's just right now in its current state, I don't know who it's for. Like, I, you know what? The typing experience for the few keys, it actually felt not bad. But like the enter key is one of those really sensitive ones. So that was like triple triggering, you know? This is the DS Pixel. And if you guys were interested, it's on uh, it's on Kickstarter. So if you guys wanted to take more of a, a look at what they have in terms of what they're saying about their marketing and all the other stuff, go ahead, take a look. But as of right now, all the points I brought up and I've kind of written down, it's just confusing to me. I think it's just really confusing. What's the front height? Actually, I'm just noticing this now too with my studio lights on because I actually haven't seen this in the studio lights. There's some bowing that's happening right over here too. And I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if you guys can see the bowing that's happening on the bottom. I did not see that when I was not in studio lights. Front height is 25 mil. Not crazy, but still very high. All right, well, that's the board. If you guys want to see more of it here, I'll give you guys like a little close up of everything. I would like to see more, more production of this before fully saying, yes, this is a fun buy. Because right now, I don't know, it's tough. It's pretty heavy, but it's not as heavy as some of the more expensive brass boards in the hobby. All right, guys. See ya. Love you and talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye, everybody.